and I can only recommend to anybody who ever goes out hiking to take the shoe issue very seriously before they start <laughs> out. <laughs> Things can become quite magical as well because so many unexpected things happen on the way and you meet interesting people and all kinds of stuff. I have this vision that all of a sudden everybody is going to be walking. <laughs> well, I, I tried to hike off and that's very beautiful around where I live, so yeah. uh, you'll see some of my pictures for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Welcome to the Theatre Art Live podcast, and hello, we're putting the spotlight on those who create live entertainment around the globe, the culture creators, the backstage masters. My name is Ana Aguilera. This episode is another of our COVID specials. On this episode, we will be talking to Liam Clank about Step for Circus, an initiative to bring circus professionals back to what they do best. We will be following him through this experience until he get us back to work. Liam is a stage manager and writer. He is one of the Theatre at Life content producers, and today he is on some trail in Switzerland. Hello. Hello. Where are you today? <laughs> Hi, Anna. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Currently in Biel in Switzerland, actually. Um, I'm making a stop of... Uh, Uh, feet maintenance for two three days um and i'm in this little town now very nice at a big lake but uh so far yeah this is one and a half weeks into my hike and i think it's been 100 kilometers so far nice yeah so tell us a little bit about you who, who's liam and why do you care about circus so much well i've circus has been pretty much my home for the last 12 years off and on. I started as a show diver working for House of Dancing Water in uh, 2009, actually, in the uh, training and formation process of the show and then through creation and everything. And then over the years, got more and more into stage management, studied stage management as well, and just totally fell in love with it. And uh, always ended up, I mean, I was four years at House of Dancing Water and then I ended up working for another circus show that was uh, like a stunt and circus show also in Macau, in China. Uh, the show was called Elecron, but was then closed down, unfortunately, after, after a while. And then I w uh, worked for another smaller circus show on board a cruise ship. So it's just somehow I've just always stayed, I mean... Yeah, I very much fell in love working backstage and working as a stage manager. It's really where I belong. I feel that more and more. But somehow it always stayed a little bit in the circus realm. And I, and I love the, the whole energy of uh, living and working in a show family and, and the passion and the hard work and the dedication and the total unpredictability of it as well. But then at the same time, the strict discipline to make sure everything is safe, it's It's a very interesting, very dynamic environment and every day is different. You just learn so much along the way, like personally and also professionally. So yeah, for me, that's why I care for circus so much. It's really been my home. And before that, before I got into stage management and circus and, and working for those larger shows, I, I was... Um, I did quite a lot of things. I actually worked as a diving, in, diving instructor at some point. I come originally from Germany and worked a while in Switzerland for management consulting companies. Uh, but everything I've done seems to be just little, little puzzle pieces that led me towards backstage and towards the show and circus world. Yeah. And so for me, it's just been really hard to see. I mean, personally as well, it was... Like all of a sudden the show I worked for, I mean, all the ships closed down and went into isolation. So all the shows closed down and it was very hard to see all my friends and all my colleagues lose their jobs. And many of them very sudden, like really from one day to the next. Yeah, as, as I was sitting in lockdown, living with my dad for the first time in 20 years, I wondered, well, what do I do? And then more and more, it looked like probably not much is going to reopen until maybe beginning of next year, or nobody really knows. So I was wondering what to do. And 
decided to like go out and and get moving and and do a long distance hike through Europe. And while I was pondering and organizing that, I thought, well, how about combining that with something that could help others as well, or maybe motivate others and and make a difference. And I've always I've always had the greatest respect for social circus companies. They do so much great work, usually for either no income at all or very little income. And and they like a really good example for me is always Circus Kathmandu. They've I mean they've spent years now helping young adults in Nepal who many of them were sold as as slaves to circus companies in India when they were little. And they basically help those kids to get back home and then help them to to have their own circus and develop their skills further and get really good at what they're doing and become independent and even study and learn about business models for circuses, etc. and all kinds of things. So I think they do really important work and and on the one hand bring magic to audiences and on the other hand actually really help people and i think during this crisis social circus is suffering the most because a lot of the funds that they're receiving are totally drying out or and then of course they're also closed down so i was thinking yeah well how about walking and somehow motivate others to walk maybe even start a movement if that happens you never know best would be if people would just yeah, it doesn't matter. They can do a very little hike or a very long hike like I do. I mean, I'm planning to walk as long as I can until I find a job or until January if I don't find a job until then because I think it'll take me six, seven months to get to Portugal from Switzerland. But it can be something very small or just an afternoon walk even, you know, like a, a little one-hour stroll. and then. Basically, if everybody who who walks for step for circus would then try to motivate people to to donate for our cause, and even if if every person they talk to only donates a dollar or so, we might end up with enough funds so that we could then send circus professionals to those social circuses. Like um, um, Anna Rob and Lisha Knight and I, we came up with like the further idea of this foundation. And yeah, we did call it, sorry, I'm going a bit around in circles and saddling the horse from the back. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, the name of our foundation is Step for Circus. And we set up a GoFundMe fundraiser page as well for it. And the idea is really to not just like, collect money and then just blindly donate that and not know what happens with it but to actually actually do two good things at the same time and create jobs for circus professionals we have somebody who help us pick the right individuals to send to the right social circus uh, communities and then they can they will be employed by us and they can give workshops or and support for a certain amount of time let's say for a month or so to those circus companies. And at the same time, those circus companies get that help and and get some fresh insights, get some actual rather physical support, not so much financial support, but a support of motivation and hope, hopefully. So yeah, that is the idea. That's what we do, right? Magic and then make people yeah. like keep their spirits high so basically step for circus is a project that you started where you're gonna hike and try to convince on the way as many people to donate even a dollar to to the project yeah so eventually when it's safe to go back to the world we are going to start or you guys are going to start this project where you're going to get circus professionals to communities that need or would use some professional advice in their local circus or mm -hmm. is, is that correct? Is yes, that what? yes, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's honestly, it's still in development as well because, like, we're, the three of us, we're talking and we, 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 will, we want to try and do it as professional and as well as possible. And uh, we, we pretty much developed the whole idea as I was getting ready to get on my way. 
So uh, it's still a work in progress. But yes, the, the, the GoFundMe campaign is set up. We set up a Facebook page. We have a website. And I'm basically just the first hiker who has officially started hiking for Step for Circus. And we've started posting um, on Facebook, on Instagram. And Alicia uh, Knight, she's in Las Vegas. She's trying to mobilize the whole circus community there. And we've already also, we've got a really cool trailer on YouTube, which they filmed in the desert in Nevada. And it's hilarious. It's really awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, have a look. <laughs> uh, no, I have. I have seen it and it is actually funny. I wonder where in Switzerland had they, <laughs> but now it makes sense. <laughs> All those rock formations didn't make sense. In Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So I could help either by donating to the GoFundMe page mm -hmm. on the GoFundMe page or your social media pages with in my social media, right? Mm -hmm. So I could share your Facebook page with my friends or I can go on a walk or on a hike mm -hmm. and then tell everyone I met there, hey, this is what we're doing. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Those are the three ways I could help. Yeah. Or you could even, I mean, if you don't want to bother people while you're walking, you know, like if you're like, ah, this is a bit weird. I mean, you can just basically take a bit, take maybe a video or two and take some pictures while you're walking and then post it to your social media, post it to our Step for Circus social media as well share it with us and then maybe you know share those posts with your friends and try to motivate them to donate to the cause as well and i have this vision that all of a sudden everybody is going to be walking <laughs> well i i try to hike off and it's very beautiful around where i live so yeah. uh, you'll see some of my pictures for sure <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah and, and, and i mean it's just it's you know it's it's a it's an effort and a vision but i mean of course who knows you know if it'll work or not but it'll be great even if we can collect just a little bit then maybe we can at least send one or two people over to one or two social circus companies that would already be great you know and and if it's it's grows greater in scope than that then then we'll we'll deal with it that way but the, i mean the good thing is that theater art life is involved as well and and that we do have the direct connection to to the community in las vegas as well and and a lot of um entertainment industry connections so i hope that we can you know i mean the main idea is also to really spread some positivity you know during this because a lot of us for a lot of us it's really quite i mean we're so used to being busy and active and working backstage and having a project that totally absorbs us and then now all of a sudden we're kind of totally in limbo and everything is uncertain and nobody really knows what's going to happen and people are trying to stay busy anyways and i think a lot of them are going to go walking or hiking anyways well we have to stay fit both physically and mentally and because yeah. the industry and our jobs demand us so right so this is a good project i yeah. think i think it's going to be a success so, so far, you're in Switzerland and you started a week ago. What's been your biggest challenge so far? My biggest challenge was definitely my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's really uh, very much due to two uh, things. One is uh, that I haven't really worn heavy shoes very often in the last few years, so my feet are not used to it anymore. And... I had the brilliant idea instead of going like tr of, of training a bit more before I go out to just sort of get the fitness on the way, which was not very smart. I admit that totally. Um, and then the second thing was that I ended up bringing the wrong shoes at first. Uh, so I ended up with a lot of blisters and a lot of pain in my feet. And now I bought the right shoes. So that was a very big challenge, feet. And I can only recommend to anybody who ever goes out hiking to take the shoe issue very seriously <laughs> before they start <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, the second really big challenge that we've encountered is water, which is very surprising because I've, been hike I've gone hiking in the past in the Swiss Alps. 
And there, because there's so many glaciers, there is so many springs and, and fountains and stuff. Like you, you really, you find water everywhere and it's crystal clear spring water. You don't even have to filter it. It's awesome. And now we are, um, a, a buddy of mine, he started walking with me as well. He will stop walking with me, I think, from day after tomorrow onwards. But he, it was really nice to start off together with him. And the two of us, we were really quite surprised because we're now on the, it's called the Trans-Swiss Trail. And it goes through the Swiss Jura region. And it's all these Jurassic rock formations. And it's very porous rock. And what we did not realize is that every single drop of rain that falls in this area runs straight through the rock into the valleys and nothing stays on top. And we are always on the ridge on top. So it's been a real challenge to find enough water every day. And then, of course, we already have backpacks that are like 12 kilos heavy. And then you don't want to take three, four, five kilos of water with you. It's just too much. So we've been mostly ringing on doorbells of farmers and and just trusting our luck that we'll find something so far so good but there were a few days where it was a bit hairy and because it's also quite hot now and we were like oh my god are we going to find some water and but people were super nice so far in this region it was very a very good experience so far so what would you say it's your highlight i think for me the highlight is actually was this this kid i met two days ago his name is, uh, well, it's Christian, but in Swiss German, they call him Riegel. <laughs> and uh, he was this 14-year-old kid, and he was, uh, I think he had a farm accident some years back, and he lost half his left leg, and he is wearing a prosthesis. And uh, he was so full of life. He was helping his dad on the farm, and then I talked with him a little bit, and and he's, he ended up giving me lots of useful camping advice because he always camps in the garden of their, or in, around their farm. So I, I got actually quite a good, few good tips. And then uh, he was just, he told me that he often goes hiking with his friend, which I find amazing because he has quite a strong limb, but he seems to not be bothered at all. And he, he, he had such a good, good sense of humor as well. Apparently his dad, has a tendency to run over his foot with his car because they're both, because there's no feeling, of course, in the prosthesis. So when they park <laughs> their farm vehicles, then sometimes Cradle, he notices he can't move anymore. And then he looks down and he realizes that the car is actually parked on his foot. Um, and he was having such a wonderful, good humor about it. And then he told me about his dream. Like he wants, in two, three years, he wants to hike all the way from Switzerland up to Holland to Rotterdam and then from there he wants to take one of those river boats and go and take the river Rhine all the way back home that's a super cool project yeah I love that actually I was like oh my god I have to do that too <laughs> that's something for another break between be between tours or between jobs in the future but yeah he was my highlight so far really I have to say and of course I mean the landscape is brilliant all around us it's ever changing and it's very diverse and beautiful and we go very high up and then down into the valleys again so that's awesome but yeah Krigel he was uh, one of a kind I have to say that's that's super cool and people like that keep us help us keep our spirits high right yeah so what are you looking forward to what's going to happen the upcoming days well, now I'm in, I think I'm about a day away of uh, crossing over the language line in Switzerland. Like now it's still German, but then it's going to be French. That's kind of already like a milestone. And then in about a week, I think I'll reach Geneva or I should get very close. And then I'm really actually looking forward to crossing over to France. I'm just a bit uh, sad that I'm, one month late, I'm going to miss the lavender fields. I think, I think they're... Oh. Yeah, because they usually harvest them mid-July, I think, or by end July at the latest, and I won't make it. But uh, I'm very much looking forward because I th should get through the Provence area as well. Yeah, I'm just really looking forward to the whole feeling of, be of being on the trail as well. It's already been really nice. 
like now when we came to Beale yesterday, it was so strange getting back to a, a little town again. No, even though it was on, only a week out in you know in the mountains, but it, it felt so strange. There were cars and people, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to all that and and to continue to go camping as well and and just you know have that have that luxury actually to to go day by day i don't want to stress either because i'm i'm working at the same time still as a content producer for theater art life so i want to stop in between and have a work day but i could have a work day in the middle of the forest you know i i, I brought a little pocket wi-fi with me that i'm not turning on too often, but often enough so I can, uh, you know, keep uh, keep in step with my job. But but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to just go day by day and kind of going into this openness and see what comes of it, and keep working on the Step for Circus initiative as well, and keep walking and just making the most of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and we're looking forward to talk to you maybe in french next time like our <laughs> next update will be in the french region right yes it will be, yeah. be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you you should practice i'm sure you're very familiar with the word oh <laughs> and, <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you probably will need to get by <laughs> yeah that's very true <laughs> <laughs> well just as a reminder to everyone they can visit the step for circus page which where can they get uh, information for step for circus well on, the, on facebook if they just search in gr uh, for group step for circus then they'll get on our group page I think GoFundMe as well, if they on GoFundMe, the simplest way would be for them to just put in the search bar Step for Circus, then our campaign should come up as well. And there's a nice explanation there and photos and also a couple of videos, our trailers there as well. Uh, if people are interested a little bit in following where all this leads me, they can also search uh, on Facebook for a page called Wonder Big. Wonder, uh, just like yeah, the English word wonder, and then Weg is W E G, all spelled together. Weg is the German word for way. I liked the you know associations, the word like because wandering, wandering, you know, like so you kind of do both, don't you? When you walk, you always your your thoughts end up wandering as well, just as your feet do, and and then you start wondering and 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 things can become quite magical as well because so many unexpected things happen on the way and you meet interesting people and all kinds of stuff so yeah wonder big people can look up as well and then our website is just uh, stepforcircus.com and the way you write it is step 4 the number 4 and then circus and there as well, there's some information and then also links. So every, no matter where they go, they can always then find the links to the other pages on Instagram, where as well. So Instagram, Facebook, GoFundMe, and Step for Circus. Yes, the, the, the website. Stepforcircus.com, right? Yes, yeah. Cool. I'm looking forward to talking with you again next week. That'll be great. <laughs> cool. So see you next week. And I hope a lot of people have donated or joined the cause by then. Yeah, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Please write our review on our podcast, whatever you listen to your podcast, and let your friends know about us. You can learn more about Theatre Art Live by visiting our website at www.theatreartlive.com. And you can also follow us on social media and leave your questions and comments on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, or YouTube. We want to thank David Sire for composing the music for our podcast and Michelle Schirata, who is our sound engineer. We are your hosts, Anna and Anna, and this is the Theatre Art Life Podcast, where we put the spotlight on those who create life entertainment around the world. <laughs> <laughs>